We have many, many different offerings, and anything from just a, 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 a software product, but the real, um, the real um, competitive edge we think we have is how we bring all of these capabilities together to, to, uh, in an industry dimension. So healthcare would be one of them, right? So we, we are using our, um, you know, our, our big data and analytics products that are then uh, going out there and working with, you know, industry, the healthcare industry, the, the doctors, the patients, and so forth. And we're making some of this available on a cloud so that we can actually have clients come in and tap into that data and the analytics and, and come up with solutions to some of their problems here. So I think what you're going to find in these new worlds, they will tend to be integrated solutions that are industry focused versus our history, which has been uh, a very product specific fo focus. Now, products will still stay there because a lot of clients still want to buy the next upgrade of a piece of hardware or software. But going forward more and more in these new spaces, it will be the integration of um, cloud, data, mobile, social, through an industry lens into an integrated solution. And we'll have you know, not only the solution itself, but then the services, um, consultants, who can come in and help clients actually deploy those in their environments. Well, there, it really is. I mean, Watson is the technology, if you think about it. But the way we are deploying it into the, into the marketplace, the question was, how do you, you know, one Watson versus multiple, it will be through an industry lens again. So we're working with Memorial Sloan Kettering, MD Anderson, uh, Cleveland Clinic on healthcare, for example. So we will have an instance of Watson that has um, ingested all of this data we don't, we don't load data into it. We, Watson ingests it. We literally, um, it's, it's not a transactional kind of a system. It's ing ingesting all this data that the hospitals and will give us, right, to, to load in there, and then do all of the analytics around it and the cognitive computing around it. We'll also have an instance for financial services. We'll have an instance for education or whatever the next ones are going to be here. Um, you mean by industry? Right. I mean, the, every Watson that would consume all health data would reach the same conclusion. As, oh, you mean having two Watson healthcare? Right. Uh, oh. Well, we do have different, by the way, we do have different problems that the various health institutions will come to us with and will give us maybe additional data. So some, sometimes we separate it out depending on the particular. It could be diagnosis and treatments on one end. It could be genome sequencing. You know, so different problems, different use cases that would therefore ingest different data to come up with you know, some of its insights from it. So in that sense, Bill, it is. It is multiple. It's, it's more use case driven. Think of it that way, use case driven by industry. Um, so the question was, obviously, every one of the students here would love, want, we want the university, we all want you to be leaders here. So what are some of the key differentiating characteristics? I think it is these two that I mentioned. Um, and I guess I would add the third around collaboration. So one is this, you know, um, embracing change for sure. The other is to have, not to be a statistician, but to be fact-based in a lot of your decision-making. And I think the two of those, change and data analytics, go hand in glove because rational people will make rational decisions to change if the data is kind of obvious that you need to change, right? So I think those two, again, I don't expect everybody to be a, you know, a data scientist or a statistician, but to understand and to look for the insight that data can provide as you're making those business decisions here. And that will tell you, you know, when you need to start thinking about the next change here, the next transition. And then the third area is around collaboration. And uh, the collaboration is, again, one that not only drives best thinking, right, by taking the best of everybody's thoughts to create a breakthrough, it also enables speed. So if you look at what we're doing in Watson, we are not, could we do it ourselves? Probably yes, but it would take us a long time. We're not doing it that way. It's an open platform. We've got many, many, I mean, 
thousands of people who are already using you know, the open uh, platform on Watson to create their own solutions on it. It's an ecosystem. So you have to embrace versus being, you know, um, uh, monopolistic, if you will, or, or, or um, you know, not opening up your platforms and your interfaces here. So that open uh, platform, um, I think, is, is allowing more people to come in. And it's going to be people outside of your normal day-to-day -day interactions. That ecosystem and the collaboration required is going to be critical. Those are three. I mean, those three are on the top of the T, in my mind. Those are, those are teachable. Those are teachable. Those are, those are um, I think they're a winner at the end of the day. Look, we, we just had our ribbon cutting of that new Astor building, uh, Astor Place, um, that I showed you the picture of. And um, it was, it was a, a, um, you know, a very deep discussion around how this is about, as I said, man and, mach and machine, or woman and machine. This was not replacing. Um, because there are a lot of things that, you know, that you, you wouldn't necessarily have the data on. So when a doctor is in an office with a patient, he or she might ask a question that is not anywhere in the data that's been ingested here. And it's not replacing, it's actually, I think, elevating the, the person to bring new insight, new capabilities, new um, uh, perspectives because there's a better source of insight from the data that's there. So we are very clear about this. We do not see ourselves replacing. This is, this is about you know, man and machine. Man could do, do a lot. By the way, man does a lot more than Watson does. <laughs> it reasons. It thinks, right? It has emotions, right? So it does a lot more. But it just helps with this sheer magnitude of data that Every doctor or every retailer or every you name it person would love to have in the back of their mind to be able to make the right decision at the right point in time, but can't because it's just too much of it, right? So um, this is not, we have never said, won't ever think this is going to replace the individual. It just enhances the individual. I think the changes have been really disruptive change. Um, now, in between the big disruptions, there are these little incremental ones. I don't consider that transformational. That's just adjusting, right, the model. Um, but, the big transfer, but the big changes have really been transformational and disruptive. Um, it's disruptive um, not only to our, our business model, but to, um, to our culture, to our culture. Um, where we have to, you know, think um, differently, let go of the past, let go to what got us to where we were, and be willing to make that decision to let go, to move to the future here. You know, when we think about this, um, you know, and our, our founder, Mr. Watson, had said that, you know, if a company wants to be around for a long time, you have to be willing to uh, change everything about yourself your products, your offerings, how you work, your business model, everything except your values, your values. And I think that is true. And that is, you know, what we use and rely on to keep the culture moving to the next world. Because our values say we, sh we have to be dedicated to every client's success. Well, what was successful to them last year may not be successful next year because the market has changed, the competitive landscape has changed, right? Um, innovation that matters is our second value. Matters for IBM, but also for the world. If we can help maybe just provide better insight so we can start to tackle and cure some of these god-awful diseases, you know, that's deep in our DNA, right? To do things like that. And third, trust and personal responsibility in all our relationships. That doesn't, those three pervade whether I'm selling hardware or whether I'm in the services business or whether I'm doing Watson or whatever the next thing's going to be. And I think that's, that was a really profound statement that he made. We all have little placards with it on there to remind ourselves that 
if you want to be around for a long time, you've got to be prepared to change everything about your company and yourself individually, except your values. Okay, so let me take the first one first on, you know, how do we make sure that we don't get gobbled up by the, well, by the entrepreneurial companies that are starting. So I think um, one of the things is, is, is the ability to let go of the past and be able to move to the future, right? Um, um, and, and, you know, if we hang on too long, which we did in those early 90s, right? And that's why we hit that proverbial brick wall and we didn't listen to the cl clients that were talking to us about these new competitors, you know? Now, we, we escaped that near-death experience, but we can never hit and will never hit that wall again. So you've got, to, um, you've got to always be prepared to change before it becomes so obvious that the world has changed before you, right? You've got to be ahead of it. But I think the second thing on that is also we, we bring also... Um, the enterprise view and what we're trying to do is now bring in the, the consumer side as well. Not that we are consumer business at all. We are not. But witness if you have seen the last, um, one of our last announcements around the partnership with Apple. So in the past, we might have said, that's not our space, right? We don't need to play with them, right? But as I said, the next generation is coming in all very comfortable using smartphones in their personal lives and they want to use it in their work life. And that's not just in our company, it's in every company around the world. So rather than, you know, push off in that world, we said, we knocked on the door with Tim Cook and Ginny Rometty, our chairman and CEO, and said, hey, isn't there a way that we can bring the best of each of our worlds together for the future? And so, you know, they have, I think, a gold, the gold uh, nugget on, you know, consumable, beautiful design, you know, just intuitiveness of what they build and design. We hopefully, we think we have, you know, a, a gold star around understanding the needs of the enterprise in terms of resiliency and most importantly, security. And now we can bring the analytics and the insight along with that. So we thought we could take the best of both again and create something even better for the marketplace. So I think, you know, never hanging on to the past too long and also being open in our approach, right, versus, um, versus not. Um, I, 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 you know, I think for, for the second question, or I mean, I early, early on in my career had um, a manager, first line manager, who said to me, and I'll rem I remember that sitting across the desk from him conversation, just always be yourself. And, you know, I was so relieved to hear that because, you know, joining IBM when I did, there were not a whole lot of women, you know, especially in engineering, in other, you know, parts of the business, but especially in engineering. And, and so, you know, I think it was important to just, you know, know, hear from management that I should just be myself and not kind of leave the, the house in the morning and put on a different face because I had to go and work with a bunch of guys, right? And, and, um, and so, by the way, I have worked with the guys for all these years and it's been great. One of the things that I did was, you know, how do you get comfortable with um, that new environment? So. Um, I, you know, I went to Lexington, Kentucky, knew nobody, all my colleagues were men, right? So I'm like, how are we, am I going to get, how are we going to get, you know, comfortable with each other? So big sports teams. So I like sports too, but there were not enough women to have two teams to play each other, two girl, women's teams, right? So I coached the men's basketball, volleyball, and softball teams. So we got out of the work environment. We went and had fun, right, with their families and mine. And we got comfortable with each other. And it allowed me to be who I was in both the work environment as well as in a personal environment. And so I just, that's why I think being yourself was probably the best piece of advice that I was ever given. No matter who you are, you know, man, woman, you know, 
different backgrounds, just being yourself here. And, um, you know, I, I, I've had great mentors, you know, uh, along the way. Um, I've been given great opportunities, um, but I've loved it. It's never been a job, you know, it's my family in many ways. My second family is IBM. So I think that's important. One of the young students uh, asked earlier today about, you know, what, what, should you, what should you think about as you start? You know, you've got to, you've got to have fun in what you do. You've got to like it. It can't be just a job because you're going to spend a lot of time in it. The world, as I said, is moving so fast. And as you know, we're, uh, we're hooked in 24 hours a day, whether you're in the office or not. Something's buzzing somewhere. So you better like the people you're working with, right, personally and professionally. And you better also, you know, um, like what you do, right?